Welcome everybody to another episode of Hope For You. And I know this is Wild Wednesday, so we will keep the relaxed, fun atmosphere of Wild Wednesday. But I have with me a different guest in-house um, today. So I have Kelly Fehrenbacher Hi. here today. <laughs> so she is so excited to be on here with me. You have no idea the excitement level here in the house. <laughs> so <laughs> excitement, just wanting to kill me. One of the two. I don't know which is more real, but um, today... Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All righty. Awesome. <laughs> She's like, I have to talk now. <laughs> um, so we have our topic. We, were, we kind of got on talking about offense yesterday and what that can do and um, just how insidious it is in people's lives. And it works its way through their whole persona and impacts so many different relationships. Even people you're not offended at, all of a sudden it starts impacting relationship with other people and stuff. So we're going to talk about that today and talk about how offense is a choice. Yes. Would you agree? You agree with that, that offense is a choice? It is a choice, even though it probably doesn't feel like it. And so one of the things that as you guys were talking yesterday about mm -hmm. offense is I, one of my comments was, is that you need to have a plan. Yeah. Because when you're offended, you don't feel like it's a choice. Mm -hmm. But if you have a plan to get out of it, you'll yeah. realize that it's a choice and you have to think through those things. Yeah, that's good. Because uh, I remember um, Brother Brian Wright, he's said a few times when I've been in one of his meetings, but and also on his uh, broadcast, but he said God told him to recognize the spirit of fear and the, that those emotions of fear. Begin, recognize those so that when you start to feel it, you know it's fear trying to attack or come on yeah. and you can resist it. It's the same thing with offense. Begin to realize those emotions of offense. Yeah, know your emotions and know how you respond to it. So... So a lot of times when I get offended, I go into this cutoff mode mm -hmm. where I'm just going to cut everybody off. And, and so a good trigger for me to realize that it's offense and to go to my plan is that I'm cutting everybody off or I'm moving quickly through a decision mm -hmm. or I've decided that I'm going to quit something that I know that God has told me to do. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good. And it's recognition of all that. So um, I also want to just take a minute and say thank you to everybody who's watching. Uh, we have Lori, we have Deanna, Clarissa, uh, Terry, Dun Dun Jean is here. All right, cool. Up, oh, go Kelly. There we go. Um, let's see. Absolutely agree. It is a choice. That is correct. So again, we're always trying to hit at least the hundred comments. Yesterday we had over two hundred. It's fantastic, um, and I know it's going to do well today as again. So. Let's just jump right into it. We're talking about it and we're talking about how it's a choice. And, and like you said, people don't think it's a choice. Somebody no. says something, they're like, well, uh, you know, I'm upset with that. That, that makes me mad. I'm, a, I'm offended. And, you know, there's a comedian. He says, you know, everybody's offended. He goes, you know what happens when you get offended? Nothing. Nobody cares. It just impacts you. Yes. And it hurts you. So with that in mind, like, when you recognize those emotions of offense, mm -hmm. what are some things you've started doing to overcome them? Well, first of all, you pick out friends that um, will always take you back to the word. And so when you call them yeah. and you're offended, they are the friends that will always take you back to the word. Mm -hmm. Second of and all- And you love it when that happens. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're offended. Right. Um, so, um, but you know, hey. Yeah. Um, but no, seriously, um, pick out your friends and you have to write them down because when you're offended, you're not going to gravitate towards those. Mm -hmm. You're going to gravitate towards the people that will, you know, pat you on the back and tell you you're right in your feelings yes. and everybody has feelings and feelings are not a bad thing. They shouldn't treat you thing. like that and that's so horrible of them. You deserve better. You have, you know, mm -hmm. they don't have the right to do that. All those kind of idiotic phrases. And if you're not careful, those friends will, those good friends mm -hmm. that are, they can be Christian. Yeah. 
they can be Bible believing people will talk you right out of your kingdom purpose mm -hmm. because they have things that they're dealing with and they want to comfort you. But there are times when you're offended that you shouldn't be comforted. Mm -hmm. You should be brought to the word because if you comfort offense, just like if you comfort fear, mm -hmm. it will consume. Yeah, it, it's it's like fire. It's like a fire it's always looking for something else to burn and consume and alter, change, destroy one of those. Cause man, when you're offended, you, you are, you're allowing that hurt or that, um, phrase statement opinion of you that someone said to really dictate how you live your life. You have now elevated that comment or that offensive statement or whatever as now Lord, mm -hmm. because now you're operating and living out of that and you're being directed by it, even though you don't think so, you are. Well, I think sometimes we also feel like we have a right to, um, mm -hmm. to live in that place. And one of the parts of my journey is that I come from an abusive background mm -hmm. and uh, had abuse, which is, you know, if you think about it, it is a definite offense, you know? Sure, and if, yeah. if you heard my story, people would stand beside me and say, you know, that's not your fault. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna say that's, you know, if you've ever been abused, it isn't your fault. But at some point in my life, I had to make the decision, am I going to continue to worship that act or that situation that mm -hmm. happened in my life more than God? Yeah. And am I going to keep it out of the kingdom purpose? And so there's a decision, even in those types of situations, to not be offended. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes because of the culture that we live in, we allow people, and because we want to comfort them mm -hmm. in their situations, right. we allow people kind of to sit in that place. Mm -hmm. And what offense does is it cuts you off of your kingdom purpose mm -hmm. and who you're supposed to be. And, uh, but yet, you know, how do you walk that out? Yeah. You know? And I think the thing with, you know, people, you don't want to, you know, something's happened bad to them or whatever. Maybe, and most of the time when you're dealing with this offense, it's something that's been in place for a long period of time in those kind of situations. It's mm -hmm. something that's happened years ago that they are still identifying as a victim of that and and so it's offended them and they've lived out of that offense so we talked about yesterday digging out that root yeah finding the root reason why you're behaving and responding the way you do anytime someone says this you instantly have this you're irritated you're upset you mm -hmm. and so it, it takes a minute to recognize like i shouldn't be responding like this yeah and you know i don't know you know, I speak on abuse all the time. I help victims mm -hmm. of abuse, but you know, I think that sometimes even with situations that's happened with in your childhood and things like that, um, you know, I was a part of this group that was trying to help me be healed. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you'll just always have these responses with, you know, people in your life or situations and you should just know them so that you basically can avoid them. Right, right. And um, I think, you know, the goodness of God is mm -hmm. that we don't have to avoid things. Yeah. We don't have to walk away from things. We don't have to be scared to walk into situations. Mm -hmm. And you're not marked in this place of like, I have to stay in this place forever because something happened to me. Because, you know, with God, he makes all things new. And so when he is moving in your life, and he wants to make all things new, we have that choice mm -hmm. to either walk in that kingdom purpose or to walk into offense. Yeah. And um, so. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> you can get offense is one of those. Um, it, it can seem very small, mm -hmm. but if you don't recognize it and get rid of it now, it, it's like the root system is very strong. And so we talked yesterday about how you sometimes you just break a weed off at the surface level mm -hmm. and you think up oh, took care of that. Can't see it anymore. But really you've just, you're just holding it down. You're not really dealing with it because it can be sometimes painful because like why you took offense to it really explains there's more, there's usually something more wrong with you mm -hmm. than the person who said, cause most of the time and I'll say most time, cause I understand there's just people who are jerks and try to, say jerky things, but most times somebody will do or say something and they don't know that they've offended you. And yeah. you walk away offended, hurt, irritated, marginalized, whatever. And the other person has no idea and they go on living their life 
meanwhile, you're in a situation of upset, frustrated, irritated, mm -hmm. saying things like, I can't believe that they would do that. I would never make that decision. I would never do that. You know, and you're, you're rendering, you're rendering judgment on them. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a f scary place to live in. Yeah. Well, and that's why it's good to have a plan mm -hmm. because one of the major things that takes you out of offense mm -hmm. is that you're vulnerable enough to yeah. look at it and to ask questions. Why yeah. am I offended? Even for the very, very small things that happen and somebody mm -hmm. calls you a name or whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, did, they, they didn't meet your expectations. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the first question to ask is, did they know your expectations? Right. Where did your expectations come from? Mm -hmm. You know, how are they that day? Did you even find out how their day was? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the reason those questions are good is because you don't want to live in a place where you're offended and you keep that small offense and then it just grows into this big plant of offense and then it changes the way you see things mm -hmm. and so not only did they offend you but now you have these glasses on that are looking for offense mm -hmm. you know I uh, <laughs> that's good yeah I, I recently was talking about my first Sunday here and uh, <laughs> yes tell us about that <laughs> <laughs> so my first Sunday here um, I came in and I had already been offended from a past experience. Mm -hmm. And so I had made a decision that my kids, you know, I was in ministry and mm -hmm. did all this stuff. My kids needed us to be a part of a church. We knew we were called to Hope City for months. We saw the yeah. sign at the baseball field. Yeah. And I walk in and my whole thing was, I was not going to do the church thing. Mm -hmm. And I've done the church thing like my whole life. <laughs> and, um, and so you asked me, you know, actually it was Shanti that asked me, what did you think about your first Sunday? And I was like, well, I thought the service was like spoken from a punk. And, <laughs> and that's me. And so, um, and I was offended mm -hmm. because of my past experience. And mm -hmm. what I tried to do is I tried to take the message that was spoken that day mm -hmm and make it not biblical mm -hmm. because the place I came from was so unbalanced in that area. Yeah. So I come in and I walk into a service. Um, and you have, you're having physical problems and stuff like that. And I, and it was all on healing. Oh yeah. It was yeah. all on healing. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I was just, I, I couldn't even balance in the sanctuary because our sanctuary floor has a slant yeah. in it. So I can't even stand up without thinking I'm going to fall over. And I have dealt, um, at that time with autoimmune symptoms for mm -hmm. like 16 years. And he gets up and says, well, you know, healing happens because I say so. <laughs> <laughs> and I had just came from the situation where people are like, well, you know, watch what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You couldn't. Very legalistic. Very legalistic. Yeah. Like you couldn't even like share what you were like experiencing. And I had been getting tons of injections. Mm -hmm. um, at the time I was on 27 prescriptions and two infusions. And then <laughs> one of the things that was held over my head was this constant thing of because I said so. Mm -hmm. So when I walked into the church, I already had these glasses on mm -hmm. like, I believe in God, I love God, I minister, I do all these things, but we're not going to go back to this, you know, talking about what you're going to say and speak. And then, of course, the message is because I said so, or because I say so. Yeah. And then the next week was even better <laughs> because I say so part two. Part two. <laughs> uh, double down. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, but the truth was, there was nothing biblically wrong with it. Mm -hmm. There was nothing wrong with the message. It just so happened that I was offended mm -hmm. because of my past. And I was also stuck and I was also scared. Mm -hmm. And so when I came into the church and, you know, I was offended. Fortunately, I reached out to my plan, you know, mm -hmm. and I called a few people and they got to go through the whole message with me, I think four times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, Kelly, show me biblically where this message is wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the message wasn't wrong. It was my heart that was mm -hmm. wrong. And it was me holding on to this hurt yeah. of being misunderstood that had nothing to do with Hope City, had nothing to do with Pastor John. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with the people around me. And um, 
And I'm so thankful for having a plan and that I didn't hold on to offense mm -hmm. because I, I am completely healed. Like they just yeah. recently had to take all my diagnosis off my chart. <laughs> um, and yeah. the truth of God still stood true in my life mm -hmm. and it didn't change. And so, yeah. um, but I was offended. Like I didn't do anything for like five months. And, um, and so, but as long as you don't stay there and you allow God mm -hmm. to work you through that, mm -hmm. he will work you through that. Yeah. And it's not always pleasant feeling to your flesh, to your emotions, how the work or the process goes. Cause he's going to point out, it's not really the other person. It's you. And there's something in you. And he, and you might think, oh my gosh, that's not right. What if the other person did say something offensive? That's, God can deal with them on that, but how you receive it, whatever anybody says, is really what gives power or strength to it. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I, I'm, I really try to not get offended with anything. Now it's, it's funny because um, Dan Muller, I listen to him and he says, it's funny we say we love our spouse and our family the most, but usually we're offended by them the most. Mm -hmm. And if you love them, love takes no offense. So how does that, you know, how does that jive? Um, so it's, it's one of those where it is a every opportunity decision to make. Um, am I going to believe what Jesus says about me or am I going to believe what this person just said about me? And I think the hardest thing for me was... Um I was reading one day and I was dealing with some stuff from my past and God said, are you going to stop worshiping them above me? Mm. Oh. And so <laughs> you were like, oh. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> well, it was like, oh, gut punch. what did you just say? I don't <laughs> worship them. I mean, like I don't read their word. Mm -hmm. I read your word. Yeah. I don't, you know, sing songs about them. But yeah. when you really think about it, when you make your actions towards an offense, even if they're wrong, especially I would say, um, why would you want to worship them? Yeah. And so when you plan your actions towards them, then that's who you worship. Mm -hmm. That's the situation you worship. And, and so when God said that to me, I was just like, okay, well, um, I, okay, I will, <laughs> I will work on that. Yeah. But you know, it made it very real to me because I, um, then every time I was going to respond to that or do something with that, um, I uh, realized, do I really want to elevate that person mm -hmm. above God? Mm -hmm. Do I, am I planning to get provision from that person? Yeah, yeah. Am I planning to do anything? And so when that shifted, I was able to then walk out of many offenses mm -hmm. because I'm like, man, I don't want to put that person above God. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to put that person above anything, let alone worship them. And, and God was like, well, if your actions are happening because of that situation, then yeah. you have placed them above me. Yeah. That's, ooh, that's tough. But yeah. It's, it's, it's true, but man, that, that had to just be like, oh gosh. Well, yeah, Ugh. because every time that you, you, because you feel justified a lot of times oh, yeah. in your offense, sure, and and you feel justified in your actions mm -hmm. because this happened to me. Yep. I should be able to go through whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I mean, if someone was sitting in front of me and they were something bad happened to them, mm -hmm. it would be very hard for me to say. Well, are you going to worship them or God? Right, you know, right. I mean, of course, I'm going to comfort them and sure. and things like that. But the truth of the matter is, is that when you hold on to it and your actions are because of a situation mm -hmm. or because of a person, yeah. then you're really worshiping them above God because mm -hmm. our actions and our every day should be because of God. Yeah. And um, mm. and so for me, <laughs> I would walk into situations, and um, and that's actually another thing that happened here was. Am I going to worship my past situation mm -hmm. above what God wants to do with me yeah. and, and do with Hope City? Yeah. Am I going to worship those situations above that? Mm -hmm. and, um, and that puts everything in, in a picture that you don't really think about. Yeah. And, so, it, and you mentioned earlier, just it prevents you from living out your kingdom purpose. And offense is a... 
it's a barrier. It's something that blocks you from receiving from God because really what it is when you're, when you're judging that person as wrong and whatever they said or did to you, you know, it, it, you're actually judging yourself not worthy to receive that same forgiveness or, you know, or mercy or whatever. So you, you're judging them for how you feel about you. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, one of the big things we talk a lot about here at Hope City is our identity and who, who do we get our identity from and where do we get it from? Because if you can get that settled, my identity comes from Christ and the word, then when somebody says something that's contradictory to that, it, it doesn't take root. Yeah. But if you don't have it that way, if you're so self-centered that everybody has to stroke me just the right way, everybody has to say things just the right way, they have to ask me to do things the right way, they have to do everything just the right way around me, or, you know, have you ever been around somebody where it feels like you're walking on eggshells the whole time? Mm -hmm. You're afraid to say anything almost because you don't know what's going to set them off. Those are the people with those offense glasses walking around. They're just waiting because they've been hurt before and they're not going to let anybody else hurt them. So now I'm justified to go off on this person because they said something wrong that I deem wrong. And, you know, it will never fail that those situations will happen because yeah. they are like, you know, um, this, this same situation follows me from church to church to church to church. Yes. And the question is, is <laughs> if you had an enemy and you knew their button that would stop them, that yeah. would silence them, that would keep them out of their kingdom purpose, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would you not push it everywhere? Every, every time. Yes, every time. And then on top of it, when you're already been offended, you put on these glasses that says, I, because that's how I was when I walked into Hope City. Mm -hmm. I walked into Hope City with glasses that said, I am looking for this, 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 and this. And if I see these things, then I'm out. Mm -hmm. And one of those things was talking about how you speak about <laughs> inhaling. And it happened to be the first service. Oh. And, you know, of course, oh, you know, gosh. because that was my major thing, you yeah. know. And here I was really sick, and I had been working in ministry, and that was one of the things that was just pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed on me mm -hmm. in the wrong way. Right. They didn't do it right. It mm -hmm. was wrong. But here's, here's what happened. They did something wrong, and then I'm going to stay offended. I'm going to put the glasses on, mm -hmm. and I almost missed my kingdom purpose. Yeah. And I just... If there was anything that I could tell people is like, it is not worth it. Yeah. It, there it, is, it is not worth it. No. Cause think about, I don't want this to turn into a, I'm going to brag on Kelly time, but just think if you wouldn't have heard what God said and then chose to release those offenses and pursue your kingdom purpose, um, our activity in this community would not be near what it is the people that we're impacting would not be as large as it is. Um, all the organizations that we're part of that are now wanting to partner with Hope City because they see us as our uh, community um, outreach church, a church that has a community, a heart for the community. All that would, it would happen because that's what the vision God has, but it, it would have been done and you would have missed your part in it. Yeah. And I want to tell you, if I could tell any, like, if you hear anything, it would be, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's just not worth to hold on. And it is totally worth it to have someone question you. If yeah. you're, like, sitting there and you're offended and you're like, I, I, all these hurts and all this stuff, have someone question it. Yeah. Have someone take it to the word, line it up. Because the one thing that shifted in me um, was that I got really, really, really sick. Mm -hmm. And I was in the hospital and I was basically like, God, I what, you know? Because I do know that you heal mm -hmm. and I do know your word. Mm -hmm. I've even spoke it. Yeah. I've even prayed for people and they were healed. Right. And here I am, I'm like, now I'm like really sick. I was going septic. Um, and I was just like, I don't want to do this again. And God simply said, when will you, are, are you going to let me be your God? Or are you going to keep self-protection? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, that we don't realize is with offense comes fear. 
Mm -hmm. comes self-protection yes comes abandonment you feel mm -hmm. abandoned a lot of times i'm you, alone depression nobody understands it is yes. like a gateway <laughs> to all these other things mm -hmm. and if you entertain offense it doesn't come alone yeah that's and good. it just grows and grows and grows so yeah. now you were offended because of a, of a little thing and now mm -hmm. you have depression and you are walking in fear mm -hmm. and you're walking in anger and, you, you know, self-protection. Yeah. And it all just comes together because it's just a human natural thing. It isn't yes. that you're bad. It's just natural that if you're offended and you don't want to be offended again or you don't want to walk through that again, you're going to self-protect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put and, that in the comments. Offense does not come alone. No. Uh, and that's so good because it... it you know, it's kind of like they talk about like a, a gateway drug or whatever. Like offense is like a gateway for all these other things that happen in your life. Um, and just some of the comments, uh, Lori says, you know, I think some see offense as being a mode of self-protection and that is an illusion from the enemy. You're not, yeah, you're not protecting yourself by being offended. You're actually making yourself vulnerable because now you've opened yourself up to the enemy and to all his tactics. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know, in the, uh, you know, we're contractually obligated to read some scripture, just so you know. <laughs> but, but it, you know, Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended by me. Blessed are those. So if you're offended by him, you're not blessed. You're already walking out of favor. You're not in his favor. Um, and like Shanti says, yes, it goes beyond releasing it in your mind. Your actions should be uh, the same towards that situation as any other. No cold shoulder treatment of somebody who said something you didn't like. No not talking to them. No cutting them out of your life. I think somebody earlier, I think as Terry said, you know, if, you know, if sometimes if somebody hurts you, you just kind of cut them off or whatever. And that is not, that's not forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That is not remotely close to forgiving them. And it's something that you are, you're choosing to hold on to that by treating them with that cold shoulder or whatever, not talking to them, ignoring them, uh, just, just being, you know, oh, hi, how you doing? Just the, po the polite thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, you know, Shanti says it's, yeah, no cold shoulder. And then Gene, offense is a roadblock. Uh, so then you take the detour. <laughs> you just get way back on the right path. It's, it's so true. Um, and it is, it's something that the enemy wants you detoured. If he can't block you permanently, he wants you at least to take the wrong route to get you to your kingdom purpose. He wants to delay and just cause problems in your life. And that's what offense does. It, it causes problems you never knew could be problems. And you can choose to put it, lay it all down. And that's why I've been, you know, this all in uh, uh, sermon series that we're doing, that this is part of it. It's your rights to be offended. You take those rights and you put them on the altar because what rights do you really have? If Jesus is your Lord, you do what he says. You respond to what he says, not what someone else says. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and it's just, it's, but it's, it's insidious because you, that's the thing with deception. You don't know you're in deception until you activate your plan and somebody's like, so what was really wrong with that sermon? Well, it doesn't fit with how I feel or my experience. Or someone used the word in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but what is actually wrong with the word? Right. There's nothing wrong with the word. Mm -hmm. Or it didn't come across how you thought it should. Yep. Or it didn't, uh, wasn't delivered how you thought it should. So yeah. now everybody needs to be according to your thoughts and your expectations mm -hmm. and not God's. So you have, you have made yourself God. Yeah. And mm -hmm. everybody should walk around under your expectations. And mm -hmm. that's really what offense is, mm -hmm. you know, in different directions, yeah. you know. And so one of the things that I dealt with when being offended is that realizing that, you know, now I have these glasses on of offense. Mm -hmm. So now I wanted you to operate through my glasses. Yeah. Yeah. And not God. And how do I even know how you're seeing things? 
Exactly. It's an unspoken expectation. And if you would have asked me, Kelly, do you want me to speak from a fence or God? Mm -hmm. I would say God, of course. You don't recognize that you're doing that. Yeah. Until you call up a friend and complain. And they're like, <laughs> okay, so let's go through the whole sermon point by point, mm -hmm. you know? And once they went through the whole sermon point by point, I realized, man, I don't, um, I don't want to stay where I'm at, yeah. like an infant. Mm -hmm. um, but then I had to sit through a whole other Sunday and, and a whole series, by the way, a whole series, a whole series <laughs> about healing. Um, like for four, like four to six weeks, something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It never ended. Um, <laughs> and, and so, <laughs> so you know, mm. it, it, it's one of those things, though. God wanted me healed mm -hmm. right off yes. the bat. Yep. And, um, and I laugh about it now, but I remember coming into this, the sanctuary and I can't stand in the sanctuary. I'm off balance. I feel I got hit hard. Mm -hmm. Then I got COVID mm -hmm. and then I went septic and then I had tachycardic from COVID. And I just remember like when I got well enough to come to the church and I'm sitting here, um, now what, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, um, but I was still holding on to everything that I was never going to do again. I was never going to mm -hmm. work in a church again. <laughs> I was never going to like actually be friends mm -hmm. with people at church. I was never going to, yeah. I was never going to, because I was never going to. Because all of those to. things have hurt you. Oh yeah. You know, and, mm -hmm. and here's the thing. I wasn't someone that just like came into the kingdom. I've been ministering. I've been everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've been with organizations. I know God and I know how he works and I've seen him do mighty, amazing things. And yet I let offense like captivate me yeah. and I am never going to. And one of the things you should look at all your, I am never going to oh. statements. Yes. Look at those. Mm-hmm. Because, the, I mean, there might be a few that you can keep, mm -hmm. but most of them is moved because of a situation yeah. or somebody did something or, you know, mm -hmm. I am never going to look at all those statements and make sure that they line up with the word of God and they line up to his kingdom. Because what is your kingdom purpose mm -hmm. and what he has called you to? And one of the scriptures I always go to, it's like one of my favorite chapters, it's mm -hmm. Psalms 139. And it says that, that not only did God make you and knew you yeah. before you were in your mother's womb, that he planned out the days before you to prosper you, to, to bring you um, uh, health, but also he, in his loving kindness came behind you mm -hmm. to make a way. And so one of the things I think about is, you know, when you walk in a fence, you're not walking in the ways that he has chosen for you. Yeah. And then you'll, I, I, what I did is exactly this. And it seems to be the story, right? You walk in a fence, you walk in all that junk. And then here I am in the hospital sick and I'm raising my hands to God. Like, where are you? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I was here the whole time. Mm -hmm. I even guided you yeah. when you were offended. I told you where to go. And now you're questioning if my life is there. Mm -hmm. And so I had to like, be like, oh, yeah, one for God, zero for Kelly. And then I had to really abandon all my feelings, mm -hmm. like all of them. And the first meeting that I had with you, I couldn't even walk up the stairs yeah, and was, balance myself. Yeah, and it's a spiral staircase and it was very difficult. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I doing? Because what God told me is if you will start saying yes to me, I will heal your body, not only heal your body, but all the things around you. Mm -hmm. And there was things I didn't even know that needed to heal. Mm. And yeah. so when I came up here and I started saying yes, I had to abandon everything in me that says, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to walk in these. And it was simple things. Um, and sometimes, you know, you have to abandon your feelings mm -hmm. to walk in your kingdom purpose and know that Ooh. he will meet you there. But my and feelings are so important and they're so real. They are yes. very, very real, mm -hmm. but they are very temporary. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're real, but they're not eternal. They're real, but they're not truth. Mm -hmm. And that's something you really have to distinguish is, am I like, yes, 
you know, and people say, well, God gave me these emotions and these feelings. No, if it leads you away from God, those aren't the God-given emotions. Those are the ones Adam gave you in mm -hmm. the fall. That's the ones Adam gave you. The irritation, anger, frustration, offense, all those things are not from God. Because uh, love takes no offense. So you have to go back and look at the fruit of the Spirit. You look at the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. That's, those are the emotions God has given you. Look at the life of Jesus. Did he ever get hurt and offended and have to go away and have a pity party? No, mm -mm. There's, there's no account. He never had his disciples come pray for him that he could make it through the day. Mm -hmm. And that's hard because your feelings are real. They're loud. They're mm -hmm. what you, they are there. They don't, they don't leave. You can't tell your feelings to leave. <laughs> right. You have to deal with them and abandon them in yeah. situations that you know mm -hmm. that God needs you. Yeah. You yeah. know, he needs your yes. And he wants your yes more than he wants to comfort your feelings. Mm -hmm. He wants your yes because he knows the way that he prepared for you. Mm -hmm. He prepared this way for you. Yeah. So he doesn't want, you know, and our feelings are like, well, but I feel this. And I just think about people that's done mm -hmm. mighty, mighty things. You know, they had to abandon their feelings yeah. to do those things. Yeah. And so. Yeah. And I love uh, Clarissa put emotions are gauges, not guides. And that's, that's so true. And that's from uh, Rachel Kruger ministered about offense and ministered on that. And she talked about how your emotions are gauges. Mm -hmm. they're, to, they're, they're warning. If you're feeling irritated, angry by somebody or something someone's doing, that's a gauge telling you there's, there's something's off. Mm -hmm. And it's, sometimes it's not always off with the other person. Now, it could be. They could just be an idiot or whatever. But even if they're an idiot, your response shouldn't be off. Right. Because you have control of how you respond. Mm-hmm. And if you're like, if you feel justified to respond a certain way because of what somebody does to you, you need to take a look at that. There's mm -hmm. something not um, clear. There's something not quite right. And you need to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal, why am I responding that way? Mm -hmm. And then just be prepared when he does, because he might show you something you didn't even realize you're still holding on to from like 10 years ago. And then you got to deal with it. Yeah, and I think sometimes, you know, it's it's constantly asking God, what do you want my response to be? Mm -hmm. And if your response is different or you feel like, you know, you're fighting against it, yeah. then it's okay to ask God, where does what is this root? Where does this go? How does it fall? Mm -hmm. Where how do we move? And yeah. um and do I do that all the time? No, 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 I do not. Right. Um, <laughs> um, I just recently went through stuff that I didn't do that with. But um, I. But if you have a plan, mm -hmm. typically, and you've wrote it down, you will go back to that plan. Yeah. And you will you will find yourself saying, "Okay, God." Mm -hmm. You know, either if it's through a friend that'll take you to the word or if it's just taking time, like I am going to write out yeah. what I'm feeling so I can actually look at it, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes we feel stuff and we respond, but we don't actually deal with it. Right. So, yeah. And that's that's something like in my life, I've been really good at just pushing things down and not thinking about it. I can just not think about it until all of a sudden I think about it. Or something happens to where now it comes back up. But I've never really dealt with it. You know, I just keep just tamping it down, you know, and no problem, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but you have to deal with it. You have, to, you have to take it and put it on the altar and say, no, my right to be upset or offended is, is less than what my desire is for my kingdom purpose. And if, if you can get to that point where you're, Lay it on the altar and you're willing to sacrifice all of your rights, all of those things that you think you deserve um, so that you can live out what God's called you to do. Man, it's, that's freedom. And that's true freedom. And, you know, none of us are, I'll say none of us are perfect in that. We've done that to various degrees or whatever. But, it, man, this is such a, I feel like this topic is one that we could talk for weeks on. Because yes. There's so many different angles, so many different things and, and just aspects to it that derail people and 
take people out of purpose and take people, just lead them towards death. Shanti had a comment earlier about that, that deception, that derailment is actually just taking you to another track that leads towards death. Because you're, you're, you're receiving information, you're receiving and taking seeds of, of voices and what they're saying all the time. God's voices, God's voice or other voices. And where's the value that you're placing on each one? Who are you receiving and who are you casting out? Exactly. And, you know, I've, I've noticed in my life whenever I get uh, tired or I get thinking about me and what I need and what I want, when you get on that me and I and all that self stuff, offense is easy. To get irritated people is easy. Getting frustrated people is easy because they're not treating me the way I think I should be treated. Because yeah. I'm pretty awesome. So everybody should treat me that way. And, you know, it can really, really mess with your relationships. People you used to have good relationships with now, you don't. Mm -hmm. Because they've done something I didn't like. They may not even know it. But I know it. And I know they really know it. So I'm going to distance myself. Mm hmm and it's interesting how when you get offended, you are always like mm -hmm. um, not going to talk to people, not going to yeah. communicate, not going to do anything. Um, and so that's the first thing you should put on your list that when you're offended, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to that person because that's biblical. Right, right. It's biblical. You're going to go to that person. You're going to talk to them. You're going to be vulnerable. You're going to mm -hmm. share your feelings. Yeah. And usually after that, it's done. Right. You know, and I think if you find yourself like I'm offended and I'm not going to talk, I'm mm -hmm. not going to do this, mm -hmm. then okay. If you don't want to go to the person you're offended with, go to somebody right, right, and talk about it because it's, it's going to lead you to death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to treat offense that way. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's why you have to have a plan. Just like you would have a tornado plan. Yeah. You need to have an offense plan because why do we have a tornado plan to keep us safe, mm -hmm. to keep us from death, to keep us from running to those places. And yet we allow ourselves to be offended day after day, after day, after day, and we mm -hmm. don't make a plan for it. Yeah. And, um, and <laughs> so it's just a tactic of the enemy that keeps you from everything that God wants you to have. Yeah. Amen. So. It's so good. And <laughs> Clarissa said, we have to learn how to deal with idiots. We live in a fallen world. <laughs> it's like, yes, that's true. Um, you know, and also she, she says, you know, it's okay to ask your leaders for guidance. Like, yeah. I mean, if you feel like somebody's done something, you're offended, like come talk with your pastor, come talk with uh, a, a believer that is more mature than you. Talk with leaders in the church, talk with, talk with your friends. And again, friends who will take you to the word not the ones who be like, you're right. Oh my gosh. They said that. Like if you ever talk to somebody and they, they start going that direction, just check it off. Like, okay, I don't go to them during times like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might go to them for other reasons, but not this. Um, uh, Rachel said, yeah, it can be easy to tamp down because that's more convenient at the time. And yes, yes. it is. Uh, she said, been there as well. What's convenient typically isn't what's best. That's, that's true. And that's what you're talking about going to that person. Because, man, you're offended, you're upset. So the whole time between when it happens and when you are going to go talk to them, that whole time, the enemy is building up this huge mountain of what's going to happen. And it's never good. It's, I'm going to go tell them, and they're going to say, well, they're going to come back. I'm going to come, and it's going to blow up, and, you know, and we're going to end up hating each other. Well, and I'm a processor, and so my excuse usually is I need a process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's good, you know, to like make sure that you've, um, you know, you've rested, right, make sure. sure that, you know, you've, you've thought about the situation. You're not in a high emotional state. But I've also used it as an excuse to not, mm -hmm. to not go and deal with it. Right. And so um, I had to like put a time limit on my processing. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm going to go process this, but I'm going to deal with it tomorrow or right. whatever right, it is. Right. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Put a time limit on it. And that's, you know, that's something that you, you have to hold yourself accountable to. Yeah. So, uh, Lori said, Jesus was the perfect example of the first life coach. <laughs> he was the first coach that gave life. Um, he asked people the tough questions to help them see the root of the seeds that they have been planted. Yeah. And I always think of like the rich young ruler, 
with that. He went right to the spot. The, he asked the. He said the one thing that he knew was a root of offense in that guy's in that person's life, and the person's like he went away sorrowful or sad because he wouldn't he couldn't do what Jesus asked him to do. So mm -hmm. Just get rid of everything. But that's all mine. How dare you ask me to get rid of what I've accomplished? So yeah. much self centeredness. It's yeah. Well, you know, I was kind of thinking about, you know, in the scripture, it talks about two situations mm -hmm. that people could have got offended. In John 5, it talks about um, he was uh, laying, um, you know, in Galilee. He was paralyzed and blind for like 38 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and it says that in verse 5, it says, among the many sick people, lie, you know, laying there, mm -hmm was a man who had been dis disabled for 38 years. And then when Jesus saw him laying there, he said, do you truly long to be well? And what it is, is he was laying by the pool and, mm -hmm. you know, the angel would come down and stir the water, water and whoever gets into the pool first got healed. Right. And so then Jesus comes along <laughs> as he's, you know, laying by this pool, which by the way, wasn't like, you know, a beautiful scene, you know, it was, horrible there was lots of people mm -hmm. all this stuff the smell would be awful yes the smell would be mm -hmm. awful and you're you know it was just a, a bad place but yet it was what what people had hope in yeah, you know yeah. and and jesus came and said do you want to be made well and that man could have been completely offended yeah like do you not see me you know mm -hmm. and um and so one of the things he says is there's nobody to carry me in. You know, I can't get in first mm -hmm. and I can't, you know, do this. And I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Yes. <laughs> and this is how you get to be made well. Well, it made me think about myself because, um, you know, I, I know the word. I read the word. Mm -hmm. I, I did all these things. I'm trying all these things. And I was, you know, I pushed through. I said yes in times that. You know, my body shouldn't be able to go and I've mm -hmm. seen the hand of God and all this stuff. And I come into a situation where God said, I'm, I'm calling you to this place. And I'm like, OK, but I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do this. And I'm going to walk in. And if they say this, then I'm going to leave mm -hmm. and I'm not going to do this. And if someone does this, then I'm not going to walk this way. And um, and so this man you know, that's laying by this pool. This is all he knows. This is his yeah. tradition. This is how you get made well. This is how, you know, you, this is the angel comes down. He's seen mm -hmm. people get healed this way. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing is he saw people get healed this way. Yep. So this is the answer. And then he has Jesus come along and he goes, do you truly want to be made well? Yeah. And he could have been like, what do you mean? I'm doing, all, I'm doing all this stuff. Right. I'm, I'm walking, I'm walking this way, mm -hmm. I'm working this way. And so, um, and then the sick man answered, you know, he tells them all the same things mm -hmm. I just said, that there's no one to lower me in the water. Yeah. And, um, and as soon as I crawled to the edge of the pool, someone else jumped in ahead of me. And, um, and Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your sleeping mat and you will walk. And I think about that because, you know, I... I, with mm -hmm. autoimmune, I had like all these nerve ending problems and I couldn't balance mm -hmm. and I could walk. And I, the biggest thing I was, I was trying to carry my composure in such a way that people wouldn't know I was sick because I was so offended by all the things that happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, but if somebody would have told me, well, come on, stand up. Mm -hmm. Do what you can't do. Yeah. Just go ahead and do mm -hmm. that. You know, and what would have my response be? And his response was he immediately stood up. He picked up his mat on top mm -hmm. of that. And it was against customs. He wasn't supposed to, be, you know, you're yep. not supposed to do this on a Sabbath. Right. And it upset everybody. Yep. But he knew the person that was in front of him was more important than his belief systems, than the traditions, mm -hmm. than the religion that he's made, than the circumstances. And he knew to obey Jesus yeah. more important to that. And so the biggest thing for me is God let me be able to obey you in that way above my offense, mm -hmm. above my expectations, above what I think should happen, above what my thoughts are. Um, and let me obey you that quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. He could have gotten offended and been like, no, I, dude, I can't. Like, I've just told you all my reasons why this doesn't happen. And now the first thing you tell me is to stand up. He, 
He could have got offended. He could have just turned his back on Jesus and said no. And when Jesus said, stand up, he could have said no. Yeah. And that's what the rich young ruler basically did. Sell yeah. everything and follow me. No. No, I can't do it. Nope. I can't put my can't put my stuff, mm -hmm. you know, down. Yeah. I worked really hard for this. I worked I've years it. for this. Yeah. I've earned this place. Yep. You know. Yep. I I'm supposed to be here. You don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's my job. Yep. This is what I thought I was going to be my whole life. Yeah. 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 Oh so. man. And and that, I mean, we've all had conversations similar about certain things in our life, and that's, you know, we're not we're not here speaking from a perfection standpoint. Mm -mm. We're here speaking from a revelation standpoint that we've had revelation because of things we've gone through in our life. Mm -hmm. And so we're sharing that and sharing the word so it can hopefully impact you all watching. And uh, I hope that it is. And Emily had, uh, she said, the uh, humility and love is the antidote to offense. Yes. That is very, very true and very good. It's Man, when you, we talked yesterday with uh, Pastor Zach about humbling yourself and being humble and being in a position to always, always willing to receive correction, always willing to um, have a different understanding, a different point of view, not so rooted in yours. And, you know, if somebody says something hurtful or rude, you know, normally what happens is people get offended, they're upset because they hurt my feelings. Instead, we should be like, what's wrong with them? What are they going through? And, you know, when they do something, for you to then say, you know, like, hey, are you okay? Like, what's going on? What can I, what can I help you with? Why do you want to help me? I just said this to you. Well, I, I just really think you, you, you might need some help here. And I want to help you. What, what can we do for you? I mean, we see that when you're working with people on the street. You'll mm -hmm. ask them, you, you're wanting to help them. Can I, can I get you a sleeping bag? Why do you think I need a sleeping bag? Because mm -hmm. you don't have a sleeping bag and you're, it's cold or what, you know? Mm -hmm. and, but they get kind of offended that you're trying to help them mm -hmm. until they get to know you and they, and they see you're genuine. Mm -hmm. You're not helping them so you can take a selfie. Yeah. You're helping them to help them. And to show love to them. And love overcomes. Love never fails. So if you keep walking in that love, their offense will get over. If they allow it, your love for them, because it's the love of God coming through, will overcome that offense. Mm -hmm. To where now they'll trust you. They'll start talking with you. There's a couple out there I could name a few names that you have this relationship. It's, it's an up and down, back and forth. But there's yes. always this relationship down the middle but they're like this mm -hmm. and you're like this and so they understand consistency from you they understand consistency like in our pop-up grill they know they can trust hope city to have lunch on friday yeah and that's i know that may seem weird but that is a huge huge deal it's huge for people is to know there's help on a consistent basis well, and I think the biggest thing is when people, they don't want to be your project. Yeah. And so the biggest thing that I got over and over was, I don't want to be your project. Mm -hmm. And so that takes relationship for yeah. them to know that, you know, you're not my project. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not my, this is, I am, I am blessed that I get to do the things I get to do. Yeah. But I don't do them because you're my project. Mm -hmm. You're my friend. Yeah. And um, there's a particular homeless person that um, uh, is my friend. Mm -hmm. Not like my friend. She is my friend. Mm -hmm. And I g have joy mm -hmm. when I run into her. I have joy when she trusts me on whatever day she decides mm -hmm. to trust me. Right. I have joy sitting on the sidewalk and mm -hmm. eating with her. I have joy as far as she'll allow me to go mm -hmm. because she is my friend. Yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, when you run into people that's been hurt over and over, you know, have you decided that you're going to be the good friend? Mm -hmm. Have you decided? Because you have to make that decision too, that you're going to be the good friend, the yeah. one that's going to be consistent, yep. the one that's going to bring them to the word. Yep. And you have to walk in that place. Yeah, that's so true. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a situation where 
when, when you have the opportunity to be offended. And that's why I've been, I've been phrasing it was, you know, I was given an opportunity, but I'm not taking it. Instead of like, they said something that was hurtful or offensive. No, they said something that gave me the opportunity to be offended, but I didn't take it. And I'm not going to. Um, because um, I'll say as a pastor or even as a leader of a group or a team, you have the opportunity to be offended a lot. Because mm -hmm. most everyone, well, how can I say this politely and nicely, but there's a lot of people out there that think they can do your job better because you're doing it wrong. Or you, they know better than you do, and if you would only make those decisions that they think is the best, then life would be better for everybody. You know, So you're always battling that inner voice like, I'm not good enough, I'm not making good decisions, I'm you know, I'm off bait, you know, all these different things, but, and you have the opportunity to believe that, or you can believe like God called me. He loves me. He's leading me. He's guiding me. He's giving me vision. He's showing me what to do and I'm going to trust him. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to do. And those decisions sometimes don't match what other people want. Yeah. And you know that, and you, it's nothing you're trying to offend. You just like, I am resolute on the mission of Hope City. Like, I will not move from that. So if a direction isn't what you like, then I'm sorry, but if it's a missional direction, I'm not, that's just where we're going. This is what we're doing. And we want to make sure that we're not holding on to offense. And we're not holding on to it to make me right and somebody else wrong. And that's what really what we're saying is I, I'm going to be right, which makes them wrong. Mm -hmm. And if they're wrong, then I'm right. So, and Jesus came to make everyone right. In fact, Jesus came to make everyone right, and he took on all our wrongness. Exactly. And so for us to be Christ-like, that's the same mentality, same attitude we have to have, is my rightness is second to me walking in love for them. Yeah, I think also it's just that understanding of, you know, go back to the basics. And if God's called you under not just pastors, mm -hmm. but a certain group, go back to the basics. Am I doing what God called me to do? Because, you know, we're all humans. He didn't yeah. call us to, to work with each other because we're perfect. Right. He called us because he has a mission for us to do. Yeah. And I think that the hardest thing is when someone's offended with you and they don't tell you why. Right. And it's changed everything because <clears throat> offense is like a cloak. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't just affect your thinking. And you, like you will be offended and you think that you are, you know, I'm going to walk like nothing's happened and everything, but you're carrying it and it can be like a cloak over mm -hmm. everything you do. And it's the hardest thing because um, now you don't know what you've done and you're walking on those eggshells yeah. and you don't know why. But once again, if we would just communicate, mm -hmm. you know, and I think for me, that's hard, though. Like, I want to know what's especially if it's me offended. I want to first make sure there's nothing wrong. Like, mm -hmm. I want to go through the whole process. Yeah. And really, some, a lot of times, God's like, either I just need you to let it go, for real let mm -hmm. it go, mm -hmm. or I need you to have a conversation. Yeah. And um, because not only does God want to reveal your offense, he wants to reveal that root, and mm -hmm. he wants to, to take it. Yeah. And it's so cool because... <laughs> What could it be rooted in your life for years? He can just take away in a moment. Yes. Just come and do this. Yep. And I'll take it all away. Yep. And in my life recently, that's exactly what he did. Is he just like, come and do this. Mm -hmm. And I will just take that away. <laughs> but I've had that for years. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't feel my fingertips for at least 12 years. Wow. And the other day I was uh, walking and... I put a shirt in a cart mm -hmm. and I went to buy it and it had a spot on it and I just felt it and it said, oh, it just got wet because it was raining that day. Mm -hmm. So it just got wet. There was, must have been a drop in the cart or whatever. Sure. And my daughter was like, mom, 
you just felt a shirt and said, oh, it's wet, because you felt it, you know? And um, it just realized the healing of God that mm -hmm. has come in my life. Yeah. And I think sometimes we're so used to feeling a certain way that when he heals you, mm -hmm. are you ready for that? Yeah. So. <laughs> and your position for it, because you've given, you've sacrificed the offense. You've, you've put it all on the altar and you position yourself to not have a barrier or that blockade in between you and God. Um, you know, and it, it, we've got tons of other scripture stuff, but I know it's, it's one o'clock. I've got somewhere I gotta be at one thirty, mm -hmm. um, And so we're gonna probably be ending this real soon, but we haven't hit a hundred comments. So we gotta get there. Uh, Shanti said the elder brother was offended. Um, you know, the yeah. prodigal son. He was offended because he didn't get his way. He never had a party. You know, you can just say, and I mean, guys, we could really go through there's, and tomorrow we're going to be on the same topic. Um, tomorrow, instead of, you know, usually Skylar and I do wild Wednesday, Kelly was here. She's not gonna be able to do it tomorrow. And we were just talking. I was like, you, yeah, you should join me. And she was like, no. <laughs> Yeah, I um, <laughs> didn't think that was best. Um, <laughs> but how many of you are glad? Put it in the comments if you're glad Kelly was here today. So You can't let the time that I'm like here not be 100 comments. <laughs> right. No pressure. Right. No pressure. So. <laughs> she won't be offended even if there's not 100. <laughs> I mean, I'm working on it. Let's uh, see. I might have to call one of my friends. Lori's well, on here. She'll, yeah. she'll talk me out of it. There you go. So um, You know, it's funny because like yesterday... Uh, I was doing something. Scott and I were working over in the activity center, getting this little room straightened up and stuff. And there was a couple things that took place that I just kind of witnessed and saw that I had the opportunity. It was like, I could have gotten offended. Hey, we hit a hundred comments. Good job, Clarissa. We are glad she said yes. So <laughs> there you go, Kelly. hundred comments. All right, we're safe. But I could have gotten offended because, you know, the, it just gave the opportunity for it. Yeah. And I was like, I just talked about this. <laughs> like, I am not going to take the bait. And that's what, I think John Bevere has a book called yeah. Bait of Satan, and it's all about offense. And so if you haven't gotten that book or read it, it's, it's a good book, grab it, whatever. But it's, it's uh, it'll challenge you for sure, so. Well, back to the comment that Shanti said about the older brother, I yeah. love that because it was really me. Mm. Because, you know, you watch God bless somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the younger bro brother ran away and he did all this horrible stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he came home and the father, you know, blessed him and, you know, had this huge party. Yeah. And the older brother gets offended and goes to the dad. Mm -hmm. And the dad's like, that was all yours the whole time. Yeah. And so, like, you were walking with me the whole time. Mm -hmm. And you could have asked for it at any point. Oof. And um, I love that story because of that, because he was offended because God was blessing somebody else. And so yeah. I have walked in that because mm -hmm. I would watch God heal people mm -hmm. like this. And I'm over here doing all this work and everything. Yeah, yeah. And God's like, it was yours the whole time. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So, it's such a good revelation to get that. Just he's with us. He wants us healed. He wants us whole. He wants us walking in forgiveness. He wants us living in that state of love. And you're worth it. Yeah. You are valuable to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And God just wants you free, first of all. Yeah. He doesn't want another worker. He wants you as his son and daughter. Yes. Amen. So. Amen. So everybody, I think we're going to close it down with that. He wants you as his son and daughter. And you have the same DNA as God. And he is love. And mm -hmm. love takes no offense. So uh, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget, if you want to, you can give. I think the link was put there in the comments. Uh, you can give to Hope For You just through the app or through our website, either one. Uh, and if not, no problem. This is We do this anyway, whether anybody gives or not. But uh, we just want to say thank you all so much for engaging and commenting. And I'm believing you're getting something through these uh, Hope For Yous. Um, lots of awesome comments, guys. Thank you so much. I would read all of them, but it would just be the whole time of that. So. Uh, we love you all. Thank you, Kelly, for joining me today. And thank you all for uh, just watching and participating and engaging. Love you all. God bless.